Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me for the PCR Virtual Lab. I want to say thank you to the University of Utah for this awesome resource. Before you start watching, you should definitely print the handout that's beneath this video because it gives you a place to take notes. And as I go through it, I'll be reminding you of when there's something to write down. So it'll help you process the information. So your genome is all of the DNA in each of your cells. It's the code for making you. And the human genome is about 3 billion base pairs long. Long. That's the first thing to write on your paper. And when you write it, that's three with nine zeros after it. If you were to start typing that and you worked eight hours a day typing that into a computer, it would take you about 50 years. So it's a huge amount of DNA. And it's found inside of the nucleus of our cells. So if you look at this, the next thing to write down is nucleus. And I say most of our cells, because some cells like red blood cells do not contain a nucleus and they don't have DNA. We don't usually wanna look at all 3 billion letters though. In fact, we pretty much never want to do that. So instead, we just wanna look at one part. So that's the next thing to write down. We do PCR to copy just one part of our enormously long genome. We might just wanna look at a thousand letters, say, for example. So it stands for the polymerase chain reaction. And you should write that down as well and pronounce it. Polymerase is the first word. Polymerase is the enzyme used, chain reaction. And that's because it happens again and again, it gets bigger with each step that we do. The first thing that we need for PCR is to collect some DNA. And there are lots of sources of DNA. So they're giving us an example of a hair follicle. If you pull out hair from the roots, you're going to get some DNA on it. If you get your hair trimmed at a hair salon, the DNA uh, won't be there because it's down in the root where it was in your skin. Some other sources would be blood, not from red blood cells, but from the white blood cells in the blood. Also saliva is a great source or your cheek cells. So write down some examples of where you can get DNA. We're going to run through the process and look at the different chemicals that go into doing PCR. So you have to start with your DNA sample. It sometimes gets a little nitpicky here. And then we're going to add primers. So jump down to where it says chemicals added to the DNA sample. Primers are really cool because they are the chemicals that select which part of the DNA we're going to copy. And we'll get to see a visual of that in a moment. And in this example, we're using primer one and primer two to attach to the two different sites. Okay, now we want our nucleotides. And there's a blank in the middle of the chemicals added. That's where you want to write nucleotides. And say the word nucleotides. Make sure you know how to pronounce it. And there's a place to write the examples of nucleotides. So you can write down A, C, G, and T. These are also, um, the A, C, G, and T part are known as the nitrogenous bases. These are the building blocks of DNA. So we can't make lots of copies of DNA without these building blocks. Then we're gonna add polymerase. And the polymerase is the enzyme that's gonna let all the little nucleotides attach. So under DNA polymerase, make a note, it attaches nucleotides to build each strand. And you can see it says it's specially selected to withstand the high heat of the PCR reaction. So in your handout, it says to handle high heat. The polymerase that we typically use in PCR is called TAC polymerase and was discovered in Yellowstone National Park in the hot springs. So a lot of enzymes break down under high heat, but TAC polymerase can handle the heat that we use in the PCR reaction. 
These are the things you always need to do PCR. It's always the same. You need the DNA, the primers, the nucleotides, and the TAC polymerase. You also need a machine called a thermocycler. And when we do the thermocycler portion, that's when you're better going to see how the primers work. All the thermocycler does is change temperatures on a regular basis. So thermo means temperature, and during each cycle it's going to change. And that's really its only role, is to heat and cool at regular intervals. Before the thermocycler was invented, people used to do this with hot water baths. And they would just take the tubes, set the water baths to certain temperatures, and then move the tubes every 45 seconds to every minute and a half for hours. So the thermocycler is pretty awesome. So here's our DNA. And the first thing that's going to happen happens at the 95 degree temperature. So that's going to be the hottest temperature. You want to write that under denature. We're now on the steps of the PCR process write down 95 degrees Celsius. So that's nearly boiling temperature. And what happens, they're going to show you, because it's so hot, it's going to denature the DNA, which means it unzips the DNA. So I'm writing under what happens, unzips the DNA. Now you see those primers. If you go back up to that box, if you haven't filled it in, the primers attach to the ends of the strand to select the part or the portion to be copied. So right now we can see that our primers are attaching. Now the primers attach during the second step, which is called anneal. So say the word anneal. Anneal means to attach. And you can write down that happens at 50 degrees Celsius. That's the coolest temperature, but it's still much warmer than body temperature. Our body's temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius. What happens during this step is just the primers attach. And they attach to the area that we have decided we want to copy. Now, I did not include a picture for you of this step because I wanted you to draw some of your own pictures. So I'm drawing a picture in that box. Keep it really simple. Just show the two individual strands of DNA that you've separated. And you can label them the DNA strands. So remember, it's been unzipped. And then possibly using another color, show primer 1 and primer 2 attaching at opposite ends. Now, I'm done with my drawing. I did a really rough drawing, but if you need more time, just pause the video. The next step is the DNA polymerase is going to come and do its job, and you can see this happens at 72 degrees Celsius. So this is the middle temperature. And what happens is the DNA polymerase adds nucleotides. You're about to see that happen. So its job is to run along the sequence and add the nucleotides to make new strands. So we had one double-stranded piece, and now we're going to see it make two double-stranded pieces. It's just copying it, just like a photocopier. This is basically like a, a DNA photocopier. And this happens every cycle. So every cycle is the three steps, the temperature shifting, and these steps are pretty short, just for 30 to 30 seconds to a minute and a half, two minutes at the longest for any step. And then we're starting to see more pieces appear at every step. Of course, this is all too small to see with the naked eye, but it's going to start to grow exponentially because it's doubling with each and every cycle. By cycle five, we had 22 pieces. Now you see all the cycles.